Well, good morning once again. This is Sam in Wyoming. And a few days ago, I went to the Yellowstone Wood Turning Symposium in Billings, Montana. The last symposium of the season for me. I saw Dennis Liggett demonstrate, and one of the things he did was pretty cool. And I'm going to do it today in this video. He did a practice stick, is what he called it, I believe. And I've got a couple here that I've done before. This one was done with a spindle gouge and it was done a little bit off center. This one was done with a skew chisel and also off center. This particular piece was done by Stuart Batty and ironically it was also done at the Yellowstone Wood Turning Symposium in 2011. That's been quite a while since Stuart was there and uh, he's an amazing demonstrator if you ever get a chance to see him. But he just did this little piece here. Actually, it's not very little, but he had a couple different tools and he just had some different cuts here. And I'll uh, try to duplicate some of those. What I've got here is a little stack of wood. Let me bring you in a little closer and I'll show you what I'm going to do. All right, now I had never seen Dennis Liggett demonstrate before and that was a lot of fun to get to know him along with his wife Kay, who is also a very fine wood artist. So I've got my pieces all marked off. I've got the ends marked. I've got a little uh, center punch on them ready to go. Here are these pieces I showed you from long distance. And what Dennis suggested, which I think is a little twist on this, I've seen this done before, he suggests go out in your shop every day for a week or a month and with an identical block of wood, do a practice stick and make the same cuts and line them up. And by the time you get done, you're going to be better with whatever tool you use. Let's go over in the lathe and get started. So, now what I'm working with is some cherry. And you may be wondering why I'm using cherry for this kind of a project. This is probably some sap wood and it's very light. I had a short length of it in a board, so I'll use that. And what I've done is I've taken some, some old printer ink and I've made that black. So I've got some gloves on. And that's not quite dry, but I thought that would be a good contrast to what I'm cutting. The tool rest I'm using is a robust tool rest that was recently sent to me by the nice people at Robust. Anyway, this uh, tool rest is just a little bit bigger than my um, blanks that I'm going to use here. So I'll adjust that, put that just maybe a little bit below center so my tool hits the center line and I'm going to use a spindle gouge for this activity and I think the twist I'm going <clears> to <throat> and I think what I'm going to do here make this a little bit more difficult for me this is practice this is designed to help my turning skills I'm going to do the same thing at this end right here with my right hand and then I'm going to turn and I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to make a chamfer on this, just a straight cut. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut from about right here to there with a straight cut. But I can't start here. That's, a, that's quite a bit of wood to be taking off in one cut. So I'll just make a very, very slight cut here and work my way back. To that line. And I am wearing a face shield.
All right, pretty good cut. And I'm just about back to my line. I'm gonna do a little bit more on that. That's a pretty good finish on that. I like that. So that's a chamfer. It's just a straight cut. And all you're doing is taking the end of the tool and just pushing it straight into the wood. So I'm going to go on the other end and do the same thing with my left hand. I'm kind of looking at this distance right here, and that's really pretty much the same. So, um, yeah, just practice. Now, I need to think about the next cut I'm going to make here. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this chamfer and make it a lamb's tongue. And what that is, that's an old woodworking design on table legs a lot of times. Right here I'm going to make a concave cut and it's going to come into uh, convex. And that's good practice. If you can do that on a square piece of wood, it'll improve your skills. So I'm going to start on the right side here. Now, that's a really good cut. Now, I'm not bragging, but what my point is <laughs> that if you get a good cut the first time, don't keep going and mess it up. And I'm very happy with that. Maybe right here you can see that profile. Concave, it's kind of a cove into a convex, which is a little bit of a bead. So, yeah, that's lamb's tongue. Let's do one on the other side. Now that didn't come off quite as clean. It's okay. I'm going to make one more pass through there. All right, that's a little bit better. I've got a little ridge in there, but anyway, let's uh Think about the next cut we're going to make. All right, now I'm holding up Stuart Batty's piece that he did. And what I'm going to do right now is this element. Just a square cut on either side. And there's a good example of a lamb's tongue right there. Now I've got a small parting tool. That's a 1 8 inch parting tool. And that's sharpened at a little bit of a angle on the cutting edge. Now, if I go in at this orientation with my tool handle low and the tool pointing up, I'm not going to get a clean cut. But if I go in directly this way, I'll get a cleaner cut. And I suspect it has something to do with the tool pointing up. It's, it's getting underneath the uh, fibers of the wood and just uh, kind of ripping them. So let me make a cut here. Just my tool rest. And I'm turning probably 2000 RPM.
<clears throat> now what I want to do is I want to make that round so I've got just a little bit more right there but you can see this is a fairly clean cut now going into the wood right here it's absolutely crisp and very clean here the fibers are lifting up just a little bit but not too bad and I can a little bit of sandpaper and that'll just uh, sand right away. So I'm going to go in a little deeper and make that completely round. Now I think the next cut I'm going to make is I'm going to do a round over Go back to my spindle gouge right here and right here and just do a round over into that uh, flat area. Now I've set my camera up so you can watch this shot a little bit easier. And I've decided that when I made my straight parting cuts into the wood in the previous clips, I didn't allow for enough space. And you'll see when I make the round over on the other side, I get some chip out because my tool just doesn't fit in there very well. Now I've decided to go with a little bit smaller gouge and I've taken off the heel of that right back here. I'm going to do a round over right here on this side and then in the middle over here I'm going to do a cove. And I haven't done, I really haven't done a, a cove cut yet. All right, I've completed my round over right here and here. I had a little chip out, and the reason for that is my opposite wing on my tool caught this corner here, so I didn't have enough room in there. That's okay. Uh, live and learn. So right in here, I'm gonna make a cove. And if I end up with a cove right here, okay, so if I start with a cove that I want to end here and here, I can't start out here. I got to start in the middle and work my way out. And I got to turn relatively fast. <laughs> I'm not getting very far on that. I thought I was uh, cutting a little deeper. Let me continue with that. Interesting. And I'm having a little bit of trouble seeing this. Unless I, unless I look straight down. And I'm going to mark this a little bit more clearly. With a straight line here and one here. And that's what I'm going to aim for. Okay, I've drawn some lines on there, and I can see that a little bit better. Let's complete this cove. Alright, 
that's not too bad. I can live with that. So anyway, I've got a pattern I can do once a day for a month. I'm not sure about that, but anyway, that was a lot of fun. And I think I covered every cut you could possibly make. A straight cut, I turned that into a, a cove and a bead right here. That lamb's tongue, a round over, a parting tool, a parting cut directly into that. Well, thank you very much for watching, and there's a challenge for you. The practice stick. Well, that was kind of a fun project to do. A little practice, never hurt anybody. I think the challenge would be the next one, maybe measure so you're duplicating this a little bit. But eventually you want to do this so you don't have to, you know, like measure and mark and all that and make an exact copy. That may take a few days. So thanks for watching. I'll talk to you later.